Well, happy Thursday morning, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And this is what I call my Morning Musings. I'm just going over uh, a new book that's going to be introduced very shortly, doing some final editing, final examination. You can be watching for this. It is entitled The Resurrection of Daniel, Chapter 12, Verse 2, Fulfilled or Future. It is Volume 2 in the Torah to Tell Us series on the passing of the Law of Moses. Uh, this is, without a doubt, the fullest examination of Daniel 12 in regard to resurrection that has been produced by any preterist. There's just literally nothing else like it that is out there. Be watching for that, okay? Well, <clears throat> want to continue our study in this video about the nature of the kingdom. I've shared with you that all three futurist views of eschatology say that one day Jesus will come out of the sky in a physical human body and that he will establish an earthly physical kingdom. In formal debates, my opponents have affirmed that very position. Harold Eberly in Oregon affirmed that view. Steve Gregg in Colorado affirmed that view. Joel McDermott, in a debate with him in 2012 here in Ardmore, affirmed that view. But in order to sustain that position, it has to be view, it has to be argued that you had a physical kingdom under David, Solomon, and Israel, and that physical kingdom <coughs> foreshadowed the spiritual kingdom of Christ, which all of those men, by the way, agree that we now have. It is now present. But the now present spiritual kingdom foreshadows the ultimate physical kingdom. Now, folks, that's a violation of God's modus operandi. You cannot demonstrate anywhere in Scripture that the physical foreshadowed the spiritual, which in turn foreshadows the physical. Let me illustrate that by looking at a text that I think is just incredibly, incredibly powerful. And that's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. And by the way, I've written on this verse. You can go to my website, BibleProphecy.com, go to the article section, and just do a search for 1 Corinthians 10, 11 or the end of the ages has come. I, I think you'll find the article very, very helpful. <clears throat> but Paul discusses several examples of incidences from Israel's Old Covenant past. And he says, those things happened unto them, and the King James, New King James, and other translations say, as examples for us upon whom the end of the ages has come. Well, that is a, an unfortunate translation. As Richard Hayes, as Davidson, and a host of other scholars have noted, and as the literal Greek renders it, Paul was saying those things happened as types of us, upon whom the end of the ages has come. Now, this is incredible. Paul points back to Old Covenant physical realities and says those things were typological of what was happening in the first century. But when you examine those events of what, was of what had taken place in the past, those were physical, geopolitical type of activities. And what was happening in the New Testament times in Paul's generation, was by no means 
the direct physical counterpart. That means that the physical foreshadowed the spiritual. Paul gave no indication, no hint, <coughs> no hint, no clue, no idea, not a syllable of suggestion that what was then taking place in the spiritual fulfillment of those types, that those spiritual things were now foreshadowing the genuine physical things to come. And that's proven by what he says. Those things, he said, were types of us upon whom the ends of the ages. Well, the word end is from the Greek word telos. And telos is not only the end or termination, it is the goal. What Paul is saying, those things foreshadowed this generation, which is the goal, which is the destiny of all of those things. So when our futurist friends tell us, okay, the Old Covenant events foreshadowed the things of Jesus, the spiritual things, but the spiritual things of Jesus now point forward to the physical things of Christ, that is an entire violation of what Paul said. Paul did not say the previous ages looked forward to now and now looks forward to something else. He said what, is, what was happening in his day, in his time, was the destiny, was the goal of all previous ages. All three futurist eschatologies say, no, 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 Paul had to be wrong. The true goal, the real goal, the real destiny, <coughs> pardon me, to which those past events pointed was not the Christian age, not the body of Christ, but in reality pointed something beyond what was being established through the work of Christ to something that would only come when the work of Christ in the church, in the establishment of the new covenant age, would come to an end. Really? We are supposed to believe that those old covenant types foreshadowed the establishment of the body of Christ, the blood-bought body of Christ, but the blood-bought body of Christ foreshadows something that was not the goal of those previous types and shadows, but this blood-bought body of Christ foreshadows something that will come only when, only when the new covenant ceases to function and the kingdom ceases to function in its present form. I think that's disingenuous. You know, you need to get a copy of my book, AD 70, A Shadow of the Real End? Question mark. It completely and totally refutes and debunks and falsifies the idea that the events taking place in the first century in fulfillment of those old covenant types and shadows was in any way whatsoever a type and a shadow of something else that is coming. And you know what that means? That means that the kingdom of God is not physical. It is not geopolitical. It is spiritual. And it will not be physical. It will not be fleshly. It will not come with observation. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's morning musings. And yes, we've got more. But in the meantime, you have a fantastic weekend. Lord willing, we'll see you on Monday.